Women and men are equal in this day and age. And guess what else that means? We're just as good at murder. Hello and welcome to Body Cow, the podcast where we believe history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. My name is Jessica Manor, and my co-hosts today are... <laughs> Bethany, introduce yourself first. Uh, hello. Hey, everyone. It's Bethany Skelton, back again. All right. Now, Madison, your turn to go. Hi, everyone. It's Madison Wright. Yeah, that's right. We're all Ooh. here. And guess what that, else? Woo. Madison and I are sick as shit and literally on death's <laughs> door. <summer. laughs> We are dying right now. Oh, oh my you God. Poor babies. I am healthy as a horse. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, well, Bethany, let's just slow <laughs> clap for you, you bitch. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So that's right, guys. It's a it's a body count special. You've got all three of us in the same oh, virtual oh. chat room at once. An interesting bit of information Madison and Bethany, this is the first time they've ever spoken to yeah, each other. It is. I'm yeah, excited. like physically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, we've communicated. We <laughs> <laughs> well, between, I think, your life and my, I mean, you're in, in Texas, I'm in Alabama, Jess is in Georgia. So you're, uh, you know, with kids and I've got kids and Jess has got kids and we all have lives. But, I mean, we've communicated. So, I mean, right. Like, through social media, Not but this is the first like physical chat <laughs> I've had with you. <laughs> so it should be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. But not only that, like Madison's got it. Not the worst of all of us, but she's got the most time consuming because her child, her second child is still very, very small. And yeah. And yours actual- is still small too, Jess. I mean, uh, I have three seven year olds. So it's like mm. easy as cake, you know? Like, it's, go play. <laughs> not only that, but Madison's also, it's not like, what is late now? Six, seven? Five. Five. Yeah. yeah. Five. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I just forget sometimes because he is so tall. I know. Lane is such huge. a big, like, big kid. So, yeah, so cute. So, so Madison, stinky. Oh, thank you. Is he not? Like, his little small. But not only that, Madison's got a five-year-old and then a baby. So, Madison's definitely got it the worst. A sick baby. A sick, a sick baby, baby at that, like. That is one of the things people ask me all the time. Are you and your husband going to have one together? And I'm like, oh, that sounds nice at first. And I'm like, yeah, that's diapers and burping and feeding and all over again. No, thank you. But look, okay, Madison, I'm going to share this. And if you would like me to cut it out, I can. So Elle is very, very hurt. If you haven't gone and gotten a chance to look at Madison's Instagram and Twitter and everything, she has the cutest baby girl that you've like ever seen. Which, by the way, Madison, I'm still trying to figure out how Snapchat works. And I finally saw... you never snap me back. Well, I finally saw... Madison, we need to be friends. I will snap you back. (laughs) Okay, good. I finally saw that you sent that adorable deal of Elle, like, playing with the phone. And I was like, that is just the cutest thing. But then Madison is texting me about how Elle's sick. So she's actually having to take breathing treatments. And I asked... Do they even make masks for breathing treatments that small? And Madison goes, yes, it's the cutest and saddest thing you've ever seen in your life. But I tiny little breathing mask. But I felt because I at the same time, I laughed out loud because I thought it was so funny. And then at the (laughs) same time, I was like. Oh, that's so sad. So Bless her heart. heart. Bless her heart. <laughs> but it was one of the funniest text messages that I'd ever received and one of the saddest text messages <laughs> that I'd ever received <laughs> at the exact Story same life. time. Story of my <laughs> <life>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was just, oh, it was great. It was great. It was great. Okay. So, This week, you all know if you follow us on Twitter, especially, I've had some existential crisis. (laughs) (laughs) Like you do every week. Oh, but this one was really (laughs) existential. Uh, Somebody told me the only thing that I can control is me, and it just blew up my world. So, uh, (laughs) 
you know who you are. You're listening. I'm going to blame you for this shit posthumously. <laughs> but um, so I've also had writer's block. So in the end, what we've done this week is we've decided to go for something fun. So we learn a little bit, but not a whole lot simultaneously. So basically, for this entire week, I've had an existential crisis. Um, we, we've had so many problems. We're all literally at death's door, except for Bethany, you lucky <laughs> bitch. Um, wow. And basically, what we're, we ended up deciding on this week is we are going to talk about some female killers because again in the wave of all of our equality movements and everything and we've definitely making you know we're making some strides uh we're here to also prove that women can kill well (laughs) if not better than certain men but first we're gonna do our housekeeping now you guys know that i am officially done with disclaimers If you don't like what you hear, you can go and fuck yourself, because that is is where I'm at this week, just so that we all know. Don't know and don't care. It is what it is. But remember, we're kicked back on the couch. We're breaking down some disturbing history. If we can get all this crap out of our brains, you know, it alleviates our anxiety ever so much a tiny bit in a world where there's a stressor around every freaking corner. Um, This is not your boring standard history class. We are not Ken Burns. Um We're going to have some laughs while we talk about some pretty serious subject matter and not take ourselves too seriously in this 24-hour news cycle. We just don't have time to process an event anymore before they rip the next Band-Aid off and hit us with the next body count. So we're here to slow it down, examine events that shape the world we live in, and hopefully correlate them with current events that you have all of 10 seconds these days to freaking process. So if you're looking for your hoover just the facts, you know, ma'am, history, we're probably not going to be for you. Glad you stopped by, but uh, let's part way n- now as friends. Bye-bye. Bye. You're not going to love it. Bye. We're not going to be for you. But first, again, our serious housekeeping. If you guys love the show, please, please, please subscribe, rate, and review wherever it is that you guys listen to podcasts. And I promise we are everywhere that you could possibly listen to a freaking podcast, places that I've never heard of. That's why we have our wonderful producer, Mike, who fits up with our bullshit and does this for us because I'm not smart enough. Now, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It's not to make us feel super good about ourselves, although I will say no harm ever came from saying nice about saying something nice or making somebody feel better. And we do certainly appreciate those five stars, but it does very, very, very much help us on the business end of things. It helps us move up to the charts. It, it's one of those things that it, it's silly, but if you do love this show, it makes all the difference in the world. Also, please, please, please go find us and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So, ladies, are we ready to get to today's subject? Let's do it. Yes, Okay. So, like I already teased us a little bit before, today we're talking about (laughs) female killers, and specifically (laughs) those a little further back in history. You know, before everybody was on a CCTV camera and before they had DNA and forensic files and autopsy and all that shit. And and Uh, believe that women would actually do all of this stuff. Not a woman. (laughs) Never a woman. Mm And chained her from the stove. There's no way that she (laughs) got out of the house by herself. Now... We can all celebrate that women, on the whole, have made more strides toward wrecking the patriarchy's ass than ever. Now, we could argue until we are blue in the face over what still needs to be done and what has been achieved. We aren't trying to minimize anything. Understand that. For years, we've existed in a patriarchal society, no doubt about it. But what happens when women manipulate that system? 
what happens for various reasons when women become the aggressors. Because aggressors, let's face it, are not purely male. And if we're being equal at all parts, and I'm weirdly proud to say that among the ranks of famous murderers, there are some seriously terrifying women. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, sort of anything y'all can do, we can do better sort of thing, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm trying to get to. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's such a weird, like, freaking notion to be like, oh, I'm so proud that women can be just as vicious, if not more so, than men. And we're going to learn very much from our two that this is very much the case. Now, this isn't going to be the first in the series of killer women that we're going to do, but this is, it's not necessarily a part one. We're not going to make a series out of it, but this is going to be a theme that we return to again and again, guys, because there are so many disturbing historical female killers. Fascinating. <laughs> and I love it. I love it so much. But really quickly, let's talk about in this first one that we're going to do, what drives the female killer? Is it different than men? Who do they target? How do they kill? First, I will say I have devoured just about every page of books that men like Robert Ressler and Ja Douglas have ever seen fit to throw up like words onto, if you will. Do you guys know who those guys are? No. No idea. Okay, well, <laughs> tell me all about it. <laughs> let, me, let me blow on my, let me get my file out. Let me shine up my nails because I Your do. spectacles. Let me get my <laughs> monocle out, polish it up, and spit on it. Because I do love to talk about how much I know. Oh. <laughs> the world revolves around Jessica. Oh, does it ever. Guys, I just dug up the funniest, like, <laughs> earlier of when Madison and I worked at the bank together and basically she had done a video entirely. I'll post it to our social media because it is hilarious like how much I think the world revolves around me um, well the best part of the video is Madison making her sounds that's oh, honestly that's the, the best. best I watched it like 20 times and I died laughing today I don't know why but it just it so happened to come across it and I laughed and laughed and laughed it's the sound effects Madison does that really make it's, the video it truly makes the video <laughs> you're welcome yeah thank you Madison <laughs> I really enjoy it I do laugh very hard so these two guys um we'll kind of talk about them a little bit since maybe not everybody knows they are essentially the two men that are responsible for establishing the criminal profiling unit at quantico the and netflix the show right? yeah uh, that what show okay that's the criminal profiling these are these are the real guys that came up with the mm-hmm. real deal uh robert wrestler and john douglas um have y'all heard of the the netflix show mindhunter is based Ooh, yeah. okay that's based on john douglas and robert wrestler Ooh. their names are different in that show but that's who that is about like colden and, and the other guy that's robert wrestler and john douglas oh. so i highly recommend uh go read john douglas's mind hunter and go read Robert Ressler's uh, For Those Who Fight Monsters, I believe is the title of the book. No, I don't believe it. I know it because I've read him a hundred thousand times. <laughs> uh, Let's be honest, Jessica. Let's be honest. So if all the things I'm about to say isn't just like 100 or doesn't match something exactly you've read, realize that I'm generalizing very much from my own memory right now. So we're relying on my weird brain box and understand, again, these are generalized amalgamations of tons of information that I've devoured over the years of true crime, and particularly historical true crime. Now, if you're very familiar with this kind of information, spare us the freaking emails. We cannot do a deep dive multi-parter on every female killer there has ever been in all of freaking human history. <laughs> Furthermore, we can't do a complete lecture series on the motivations of all female killers. If you have no idea 
idea about any of this sort of stuff. Like, go start at maybe like Great Courses Plus for some great criminality courses, including a great one on social deviancy. And then kind of spread out into all the books from the men at Quantico and all the psychiatrists have have written extensively on this subject. Trust me, you'll want to have this information when applying it to figures in history as well as in the modern perspective in the modern world. When we look at female killers, like quite frankly, to my mind, they tend to be a little cleverer with it than men. Now, Mm -hmm. psychopathic traits and childhood abuse are just as present in the young lives of female killers. And while there are many men that kill for comfort and profit, oftentimes sexual or sadistic motives come into play. Women, however, tend to be exclusively, for the most part, as a generalized rule, profit, comfort, or revenge killers. Mm -hmm. We're pretty... Yeah, revenge. (laughs) We're a pretty pragmatic bunch. There are natural exceptions, as there are with every rule in life. Now, victims sometimes encompass, a lot of times with females, children and the elderly, very much in a Munchausen syndrome kind of way. And we'll get into that a little deeper with our first subject that we're going to talk about. But more often than not, our victims are confined to male lovers And husbands, you know, whether it's black widows or one-offs, women generally kill to somehow improve their lifestyle. Again, pragmatic lot that we women are. And their, their methods tend to be, on the whole, less messy. Poisoning being the most common, shooting, stabbing, suffocation, drowning, etc. kind of make it in there. But there's not a lot of bludgeoning with women. You you stepping in what I'm kind of dropping there, ladies? Oh, yeah. We're a lot smarter about it. Boom. (laughs) Exactly. We had it coming. We Uh had it coming. I I don't know if Madison's ever watched um, Chicago. Chicago. is probably as much as you and I have, Bethany, in our lives. No. No. (laughs) The best musical movie ever. I'll have to watch it. You should watch it. It's basically about female murderers. That's what the whole thing's about. And them Ooh, getting off in court. numbers. Yeah. It, <laughs> singing numbers. And dancing. Between. It's about murder with singing and dancing in between. That is the <laughs> essence of Chicago. It's the best show ever. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it. Sometimes attention or sympathy are just as powerful motivators as comfort, however. And almost always, they choose to commit murders in places women are, like, really comfortable. Like I said, there are always exceptions to the general rule. But today, we want to look hard at the motives and methods of two different women in particular. Some for profit, some for attention, some just kind of for fun. All (laughs) I know is after, like, the whole of research I've been down, I am a firm believer that he'll have no fury like a woman scorned. (laughs) So, all right, ladies, are we ready for our first subject today? Yeah. We're starting today. Give it. Give it to you. We're starting to (laughs) die. With a woman named Gisha Godfrey. Now. Thank you for spelling that out for me in this. I tried to spell these all out phonetically for everybody so that we would know. That's guess chi. That's guess chi. (laughs) Got got fried. That's what I see. I know. (laughs) That's what I see. Guess she got fried. That's what I see. You'll notice so. that today I did not choose any French ones. French I struggle with. Yeah, but, thank um, you. German and Italian I oh now God, speak. Even the German. I can't. Ah, well, this All is German. Uh, German and Italian I speak tolerably well. So those are two that we've chosen today so that I'm not just dying i mean there's still a lot of texas that comes out in it you can't ever get rid of that but gish godfried 
lived from 1785 to 1831 in the town of Bremen, Germany. Now, she grew up in rather humble circumstances. Her father was a not-so-successful tailor, which forced her mother to take on odd jobs as a streamstress. And again, we talk about, like, nature versus nurture and a lot. So, you know, based on what happens later, who the hell knows what went on in that house growing mm-hmm. up? I mean, because... I feel like to be going weird, weird right. stuff was happening. Uh, weird stuff has to happen if you're going to grow up and be as murderous as this bitch grows up to be. Well, don't so. they talk about it in the show Mind Hunters? It's a, the trauma that can happen at an early age can affect somebody in the future. Well, you have to think about it this way. Most CEOs, most executives are actually sociopaths, but there's nothing in it for them to gain to be a killer. So mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of nature and nurture that goes into that. There, there are sociopaths all around you. However, most are not driven to be killers. It's something that mm-hmm. uh, attaches in males, at least, to sexuality in an early age. But females, it's quite frankly, a different story. And again, I'm I'm not a criminologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I, I can't make that assessment. But I have a feeling that there was something weird going on in that house. Now, her parents were clever enough to finagle a meeting with a rather wealthy saddler by the name of Johann Mittenberg. And they married her right off to him in 1806. So she went from the poor's to sort of a bourgeoisie in the blink of an eye, which <laughs> won, won the lottery real quick. <laughs> exactly. She went bougie real fast with it. <laughs> but it wasn't exactly a happy times marriage. Old Johan was a drinky McDrinkerstein and loved the bars and sex worker houses. What is the word I'm thinking of? Brothels. 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 There we go. Brothels. Mm-hmm. That's the word I'm looking for. And then he just up and dies, guys, in 1813. Oh. You know, and now. It's probably that clap. <laughs> <laughs> clap. So I left her. Like it happens real quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> neurosyphilis was a big one back then. Now, because she took care of this tramp hubby, she was nicknamed the Angel of Bremen because he wasn't a good guy, but uh, she uh, stuck by him. So now we've got our Angel of Bremen. <laughs> yeah, sure she was. Mm-hmm. In actuality, seems she had gotten around to messing about with a friend of her now late husband's by the name of Michael Godfrey. Godfrey. Wait, that's the same name. Oh, we're going to get to how she got that name. Oh, okay. Um, Godfrey didn't uh, seem too interested in marrying a widow with three children, however. Uh, God, boy, she knows Sounds how familiar. to pick them. Yeah, she knows how to pick them, though, old gish. So, mm-hmm. naturally, her parents, in light of this, were too freaking thrilled with the entire situation that was going on. but um. Some things started to uh, go down that changed old Gish's circumstances. So on the 2nd of May, 1850, her mom kicks the bucket, followed a oh. week later by, and this is terrible, her three-year-old freaking daughter, Johanna. Then mm-hmm. on May 18th, realized the other two were within a week of each other. That started on May 2nd. So on May 18th, 1850, Her six-year-old daughter, Adelaide, dies. And on the 28th of June, same year, her father dies. What the fuck? Yeah. On September 26th, same year, her five-year-old son, Heinrich, dies. (gasps) So all of her kids, her mom, her dad. Yeah, guys. All within like three or four months. Yeah, guys, five deaths, same year, super quick. But no one's asking any questions yet. I mean, it's 1815. What we have to realize is like whole families lived in one space, even if they were doing quite well at the time. And like all of them died quite 
frequently except for one or two because, you know, one illness wiped out the entire family all at once. Mm -hmm. But what do you know? Gesh is now free to marry Mr. Godfrey. Wow. Like, wow. What do y'all thought so far? That means she killed her own three children and her parents. Uh, and so she has a she five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a six-year-old. Yeah. So, so literally, those are all son. the ages of our all, all of our children that we oh. all have. That just, like, makes me so sick. It makes me so sick that she, like... Of for- course nobody was asking her any fucking questions. She's supposed to be the woman. Like, why would a woman do any of this? Exactly. That's kind of our problem, isn't it? So then, if that's not all bad enough, then Gesh's twin brother shows back up and uh, he is like fucked up from the Napoleonic Wars that are, you know, have just ended and been going on at the time. And he makes the mistake of starting to demand his share of their parents' shit. Because after her first marriage, you know, their parents' life had picked up and they were doing quite well there by the end but he wasn't asking for long because on the 1st of june 1816 he was dead as a doornail after eating (laughs) dinner she cooked him (laughs) and still no one suspects a damn thing I think the, the cause oh of God. death was literally listed, and this is as BD or some shit like that. Basically, a sexually transmitted disease, which, again, mm. is very possible in 1816. Mm. But still, like, to me, I would think someone at this point might have been getting a little bit suspicious. But no, like, everybody in this town just... 110 percent like but here's my thing like and in a town at that time that was still very small like everybody knew her parents were against the marriage Gottfried wasn't gonna want to marry her because she already had the three kids now her brother shows up and starts asking for half of his share of the inheritance like does nobody go wait a minute all these people just mysteriously die yeah I guess not. Do we know how they died? Like, I know that she poisoned the brother, but did she poison the rest of her family? Oh, yes, Madison. I mean, because that's a great question. Because, like, clearly, like, if if all these people have died and they don't understand or they don't suspect her, I mean, are they all dying from different things? Or is it all from poison? No, 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 no. Yeah, like, if mom died first, wouldn't the dad be suspicious? You would have thought well, that. he didn't survive for very long. He didn't have time to become suspicious. <laughs> You'd have thought that. I'm gonna knock you out. Like, <laughs> let's go a little further story, further on in our story, and uh, we're gonna get to where it gets really rich. Then Gesha gets knocked up by oh, Mister Godfrey, who is like, "Nope, I don't want anything <laughs> to do with you now." Surprise, surprise. Because again, this guy is a piece of freaking work. But then, so, she so, is, oh, so she, uh, exactly, they so deserve each other. But before <laughs> Mr. Godfried can leave her, he starts to get very, very <laughs> sick. God, she says. Yeah. So he slowly turns into this helpless, like, invalid. And is completely dependent on Gesha, who finds his, he, he finds his way to marrying her after all. And their mm. child is stillborn. Oh. Yeah. Is, oh. Was it though? Was it? Was it stillborn? Yeah. Really? I exactly. don't believe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, guys, it's going to get worse. So he Aww. dies again. Oh. Surprise, surprise. surprise. Fuck's <laughs> sakes. July 5th, 1870. Now, no one dies for a little bit until the money dries up, but not for long because her neighbor, Paul Zimmerman, a merchant, makes a proposal, which 
again, I don't know about you guys, but even if these were accidents and everyone thought they were for the time, I don't know that I would be taking the chance of marrying old Gisha. I mean, at very least, the woman's bad juju. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So let's go ahead and address all of y'all's questions before. So we're going to take a second from our story to break and talk about how it was that she was doing these murders. Now, at the time, pharmacy is it? I suppose a better word is actually apothecaries sold mm-hmm. arsenic over the counter as rat and insect poison. Mm. And... If whole families are, like, legit being wiped out by, like, plagues and sicknesses caused by vermin, you have to do something to kill the cause, which is those things. So you have to have these poisons around. It wasn't out of the way to buy these things. (laughs) I will take some pancake mix and some rat poison. Exactly. I'll have some some eggs and milk. (laughs) Some eggs, milk. Uh, You know what? Double up on that arsenic. (laughs) I mean, and I'll be, be back in a week for more for so. more arsenic. To be fair, though, you are trying to cut back on the plaguey deaths, you know. Um, <laughs> but it's also very good for murder. Side so note, <laughs> especially when, and this is how she was doing it, you mix it with fat, like lard, so that the animals and insects will definitely want to eat it. Yeah, but. That means that it can also quite easily be used as a butter and in cooking. So, back to Miss Gesha. She had a batch of this. It was called mouse butter. (laughs) How appropriate. Uh, How appropriate. (laughs) Ironically, she had gotten her first batch from her mother. You know, who she killed. But uh, Wait, her mom taught her how to do this? Well... She didn't know how to make it. She had to get it from the pharmacy, but her mother did know how to make it. And what she was using in the beginning was a jar that her mother had made. Oh. Yeah. And her mom didn't ever see that? Again, it was all right in front of these people. Maybe that's why she killed mommy first. Oh, like mm. her mother made the butter or just made. Yeah, her mother like the made butter the butter with the her mom made poisoning. Yeah. Or just butter. No, the the mouse butter. Her mother had made the first batch. She didn't know how to make oh. it. And her mother had so made mom. the first batch with the arsenic she, butter. That she was basically used. cooked her own death. Like, yep. Oof. I think that's Ugh, why I mom. Just got chilled. I think that's why mom was the first one to go because mother would have noticed that it was dwindling after mom dies back in those times. She would have become the head of household, you know, Mm -hmm. then she goes for her children, finally the father. So she had run out of this jar of mouse butter mother had made poisoning Godfrey. And so when this farmer, first husband, yeah, or the second husband. Okay, so oh, okay, yeah. when this already. pharmacy starts advertising that they were making ready batches of this stuff, she goes and buys it. So back kind of to her story. Remember now she's killed Gottfried mm-hmm. and she's hanging out with old neighbor Zimmerman, her new mm-hmm. fiance. Now, just so happens Mr. Zimmerman already changed his will to make sure his soon-to-be new wife, Gesha, is taken care of in the event something happens to him. Hmm. So what better time for her to test out her new batch of pharmacy-issued mouse butter? She coats the bread in Zimmerman's sandwich to test out this new mouse butter, and Zimmerman kicks the bucket. Oh, God. Gesha then makes off with the money. And again, no one is suspicious. <laughs> At this point, I'm beginning to think this is a town of freaking morons. <laughs> like, as a kid, think about that. This is the 1800s. This is Bremen, Germany. It's not like there are a lot of freaking people living there. No. I just have this mental image of, like, Hi, honey. I just came from the store with this new mouse butter. 
Why don't you try it? Sure, honey, I'll take a bite now. And as soon as he does, he face plants into the floor. Like That's pretty much it. And let me tell you, your mouse butter today. <laughs> arsenic's a horrible freaking death. Like, oh, it, God. it's Fine. terrible. So, it's at this point that Gesha just seems to start having fun with it. Really, as long as there is some kind of financial gain to her, she's in a murdery mood. When she's no longer able to keep the house she'd acquired from Mr. Gottfried, she sold it to a Mr. Johan Rolf on the condition she be allowed to remain living there. So she becomes a sort of part of the family, keeper of the house, live-in aunt to the children. But she gets oh. murdery again real soon because Miss <laughs> Rumpf dies on December 27th, or 22nd, 1826, making her Gesha's 12th known victim. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, again, when people are dropping like flies because plagues and shit, who really knows how many people she actually killed? Who knows what all she actually got up to. I mean, she could be killing homeless people in the street. We just don't actually know. But someone finally does get suspicious because Johan Romp starts looking very closely at his food. I mean, <laughs> geez, how long did it take for fun, like, someone to finally fucking say, hey, a lot of people die around you, bitch. Like... <laughs> <laughs> So they called her what angel of of what the angel of Bremen because she she took care of those first cad husbands of hers so well oh she took she care of the, them all right she should be the angel of mouse butter or the angel of death more like. angel of death <laughs> so Mister Rolf notices some kind of like weird shit in one of his meals and he doesn't eat it and then another. But this time, he collects a sample of these weird white particulate things in his food, and he takes it to one of his science shit buddies and determines it's full of arsenic. Lots of arsenic. Like an elephant's load worth of arsenic. <laughs> so finally, on March 6, 1828, they arrest Gesha. In court, it's proved by autopsy, re-examining bodies, and actually doing tests, that she killed 16 people. But she asserted it was at least 30. What the... F she admitted that she was like, uh, oh, it's at least 30. Oh, yeah. Like, she admitted it. Oh, like, my fucking God. So, that's my next question. Like, who was she killing? Where are the bodies... What the fuck? Like, was she just killing homeless people? Was she just killing, like, people that were coming through town? Because if she's claiming, I've only read a list of small there, and again, because it's so far back in the annals of history, it's really hard to track down who the 16 were, but she's saying she, she killed, the she is in Ted Bundy numbers territory now. Like, that Maybe is she amazing the to butter. me out on other people before to make sure it worked maybe that i have no idea like on just people that stopped by randomly like I here no yeah idea. like have a biscuit and they drop dead and she just buries them in the backyard i we don't know we honestly don't know so Good God. gesh was sentenced to death and because germans are just super fucking metal all the time <laughs> The execution was by beheading. I mean, like, okay, you also have to understand Off historically. With her head. Exactly. <laughs> historically, though, Germany beheaded people first hanging them, like, say, the English or maybe the French or somebody else would do. There was no drawing and quartering. There was no hanging. There was no. They just beheaded you. That is how it went down in Germany for years and years and years. I think it's because they're efficient as fuck. You know, when it comes to, like, paperwork, so it's no surprise they don't mess around with executions. So, mm -hmm. 
Gesh's executed the 21st of April, 1831. Now, oh shit, they didn't waste time. No, they didn't mess up. Again, Germans, the efficiency of those people. <laughs> Gesh three said years. In court, uh, three years. <laughs> Gesh said in court that murdering gave her an ecstasy-like satisfaction, which I don't doubt, but we also see she's motivated a lot by comfort. And I would also contend, and again, I have no idea, guys. I, uh, psychiatry is definitely not my specialization, nor is criminology. But knowing what we kind of do know about mental illness, I would also say that she has a little Munchausen's by proxy floating around in there, too. Which Munchausen's is a mental disorder in which one feigns severe illness to gain treatment and attention. So Munchausen's by proxy is causing sickness in those un under your care to gain attention and recognition for your climbing up on your proverbial cross to take care of an invalid. I'm not really qualified, again, to make that assessment, but I would contend she also kind of liked the attention and sympathy mm -hmm. she received. Yeah, and the money she received from the tragedy around her. I guess just maybe some of the status afforded her by appearing... For so long to be this angelic caregiver and, and to suffer all the things that she suffered because of her choice of shit husbands. But let's all remember, she killed her own children to get yeah. what she wanted as well. What do we think of that one, guys? What a fuck up, bitch. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. Are we all like freaking horrified? Good. I mean, I feel better that sh her head is gone. Like, oh. um, I feel justice that it's like I'm picturing this woman. I'm like, well, at least her head's gone. At least she's done. <laughs> no, no, no. At no, least no. she's done. Because <laughs> she is not even close to what we are about to talk about now. Oh, God. This one is so disturbing to me because she is just such a metal murderess i can't even begin to prep you so now let us move on to our next merry murderess of history row miss leonarda john cooley or the soap maker of correggio Ooh, i don't like the way this is going <laughs> i already don't like where this is going this is some of the most metal things I have ever read in my entire life. It is freaking rough. So, born in 1893, um, Leonardo didn't exactly have an easy childhood. Uh, by that, I mean, there, supposedly, early in life, she had two separate suicide attempts. Now, I can't... I didn't exactly find anything that was hardcore evidence of that, so I can't say that for sure. And again, we've got we're we're kind of back in history before records were super clear. But she made it through, and her parents planned for her to marry a nice boy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, an already bit trouble, a bit troubled. Leonardo pops off and marries another man. Named Raffaele uh, Pensardi. I'm going to say that's how you probably say that name. Don't count it for sure. He's a dust clerk. Mr. It's Panzardi. Mr. Panzardi. Uh, Mr. Panzardi. Get it right. He's get a dust right. clerk. A desk <laughs> clerk in 1914. So at this point, she supposedly takes it into her head that because she didn't do what her mother... Her parents had intended that her mother had put a curse on her. So that's fun. But let's get into why Leonardo might think she has a curse on her. First place they move to, their home is almost immediately destroyed by an earthquake. So that's why they end up settling in Correggio in the first place. Now, Leonardo then experiences 17 pregnancies. Three mm -hmm. were miscarriages. Ten of the children die at young ages. Aww. I know. So it doesn't exactly start out happy. And it so she has four. Better. Yeah. So she has so. four kids. 
Okay. She has four I can do math. children. I can math. I can math. The more you know, <laughs> the more you suffer. So understandably, because this has happened to her, and this is where you have sympathy for her now, but you're not going to have it for long, folks. So understandably, she's very, very protective and would do anything for the four children that have lived. And so whereas she's already a little mentally ill, this kind of unhinges her completely after those experiences that she's only got the four left living and then put that on top of that. I mean, she's literally going to pay any price, both real and imagined that she thinks she has to pay to keep these four children to her. Now, according to Leonardo, she once had a gypsy fortune teller tell her that she would marry and have children, but that all of her children would eventually die. Now, I would want my friggin' money back, but whatever. So, <laughs> then in 1939, her eldest son, Giuseppe, joined the <laughs> army uh, because it's becoming very apparent in 1939 that Italy is going to go to war. So here's where things really take a turn. Leonardo's solution to counteracting the gypsy cur or the gypsy prophecy and Mama's curse and to keeping her son safe, she's going to start making human sacrifices. Oh, brilliant idea. Yeah, you know, not a, not a big deal or anything. I mean, She's just going to make some human sacrifices. The worst part, she already has uh, some easy targets in mind. Now, the first of these is Faustina City. Now, this woman was a spinster, and Leonardo convinced City that she had found her a husband in a nearby town. Now, somehow, Leonardo convinced the woman not to tell anyone until after the supposed marriage, and she also convinced Faustina to write letters to her friends and family, assuring them all is well. All is not well, however, because Leonardo murdered her with an axe when she shows up to the house. Like, y'all think about that. Like, how metal is that? I mean, an axe. She could have chosen anything else in the wide world. She could have poisoned this woman. She could have even, you know, done something. But but here's the thing. That's if you, personal. That's personal. And if you're going to murder somebody with an axe, think about Italy at that time. Even think about Italy now, how everything is row homes and townhomes. So for it to be quiet, that had to be an axe blow to the back of the head or to the face. One chop. One chop. I mean, but guys, it's going to get so much fucking worse. I just can't even describe to you. So she then drags the body of Faustina into a closet, dismembers the corpse into oh nine God. separate pieces. And collects all the blood in a basin. Now, according to a later statement she issued after her arrest, Leonardo said she threw all the pieces of the body slowly but surely into a pot, added some caustic soda, cooked the parts until they were mush, and dumped them into a nearby septic tank. Oh, my God. Oh, oh it's going to get worse, guys, because she took the blood, waited for the blood to like coagulate, right? She then mm. dried it in the oven, ground it, mixed it into th some flour, some sugar, milk, eggs, and margarine. She then made it into fucking tea cakes that she served to visitors. But not before she made sure she and Giuseppe had some as well. Because, I mean, after all, this is supposed to be a sacrifice to kill, like, keep her children alive. Oh, my God. <laughs> she yeah, literally 
feeds victim number one to people. In the form of a tea cake. That's like Martha Stewart on a whole other level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I, you have to give her some credit because she did a lot of work. Like, she did this all by herself. Uh, I don't know about you. I don't care if she's a 100-pound woman. A, a dead body has got to be it's heavy as shit. Heavy. And then the fact that she strategically separated it and, like, took the blood and like put it in with uh, with other stuff with like, I'm like dude she put into some work with she this. had to take some joy in it this wasn't just the mental illness of like doing a human sacrifice to keep your set she put some thought and she took a little bit of joy in this because again like women tend to be poisoners suffocate like but she killed this woman with an axe dude that she got insane. that blood everywhere she, she she was I probably mean, laughing. <laughs> uh, she had to be. But in not her only mouth. think about that, like the blood, the blood splatter Butter. alone. So that means she had to clean that all up perfectly because she's having visitors over to make sure as many people as possible eat the blood cakes so that her kids live. We have entered a whole new level of seriously messed up here. But that is far from her last victim, guys. I hate oh, no. to break it to you. Uh, her second victim is Francesca Sovea. So, Francesca, or Leonardo tells Francesca, she's found her a job in an all-girls school, again, in another town. And Francesca dropped in to thank Leonardo, much like the first oh, victim, no. before she went away. So, same exact thing, guys. Leonardo convinced this woman to write letters to her friends and family that everything was fine on the premise that she would mail them on for her after she got to her destination. Then, boom, she gives this woman the axe, too. Same thing, pot, mush, septic tank. Then tea cakes <laughs> again. <laughs> Only this time, <laughs> she feeds them to all of her living children, as well as her neighbors and everything <laughs> else. This <laughs> is, oh, uh, God, I wish it got worse, but it so, or uh, stopped getting worse there, but it, it does not, because we're about to take it to a new level of fucked up. Um, <laughs> yay. God, this Go to the another level. <laughs> that's where you want to go. Oh, that brings us to our third and final victim. Oh, thank God. I can't handle any more. <laughs> God. Virginia Copiaco. So, uh, Leonardo convinces her that she's procured a job for her as a secretary. So same deal convinces the woman to keep it a secret until she's quote unquote settled. Then she arrives and she gets the ax. God. So she goes into the exact same pot as the others. But this time Leonardo decides to add some, cologne to what is essentially this broken down fat mixture because that's pretty much all that's left and she makes freaking soap that she then gifts to her friends and neighbors oh. uh, but don't worry she uses the blood to once again make some freaking tea cakes Oh and, my God. Ugh, I mean, she has it down by now, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> but she, she's Julia Child, this shit. She can right? do it in her sleep. But that's <laughs> what disturbs me about it, is she, like, throws style points on the back end of this one and makes soap. Uh, like, my God. Now, according to Leonardo's own testimony, this woman was the best of all, as she made some very good cake because she was fatter and plumper than the other victims and thus why she decided to make her into soap as oh, well my god we're not talking about pigs for slaughter oh well <laughs> apparently when you're 
Leonardo Chin Pooley, that is exactly what you're doing. But Leonardo's about to get caught because Virginia's sister-in-law, so our last victim, is suspicious as but She didn't think for a second Virginia would just disappear like that. And so she goes to the police and reports her fears as Virginia was last seen entering Leonardo's house. So they begin to investigate Leonardo, but no need because Leonardo begins confessing almost oh. immediately. She's been itching to tell people about this. She gave detailed accounts of everything that she did. And because she was so unrepentant about it, remember, I mean, she thought she was basically doing human <laughs> sacrifices to keep her children alive. She went so far as to fill in the correct details where the prosecutor was a little confused while she was on the stand. So all of this stuff is coming directly from her mouth from testimony she gave in court. So uh, naturally, she's found guilty and sentenced to 30 years, but was transferred, obviously, to an asylum where she died of cerebral apoplexy on October 15th. 1970. So, what do you guys think of that one? Okay, so she had four kids remaining, right? Yes. So, what happened to them? Like, did they die? Was the curse true? Oh, yeah. Are they alive? Yeah. Are they alive? I can honestly say I do not know the answer to that question. <laughs> no. She was just a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right, Madison. She was just a freaking psycho. Maybe that just gave her leverage to want to do it all. Like, oh, that's okay, a good well, point. Since I'm cursed, why not try sacrificing people? Oh. Oh, that's a good point, Madison. Yeah. Like, she's got nothing to lose, I guess. But, okay, what is cerebral apoplexy? Cerebral apoplexy is like where there is swelling essentially that occurs in the in the blood vessels of the brain. And again, I'm not a freaking doctor, guys. This is off the top of my head from trying to pull it out of memory. Um, but it's basically where there's swelling in the vessels in the brain. And it's still a pretty mysterious like issue and disease to this day that, that people aren't really sure about what causes and what the causes may be. Um, Okay, guys, um, we apologize. It appears that we lost Madison on audio somewhere. It happens when we're all in different states. Um, <laughs> basically, we've already made our point. Uh, uh, we, we can finish up with or without it. Um, remember, women can do it. We are equal. And dear God, justice, medal at murder. So gentlemen, don't underestimate or oppress the ladies in your lives. As you may end up in our tea cakes. <laughs> or soap. <laughs> or soap. You never know. The, that's why your mom doesn't want you to touch it when you visit in the guest bathrooms. Because it's made of people. <laughs> Decoration <laughs> only. It's like Soylent Green, man. It's made of people. Oh. Oh. But Just that like doesn't those awesome baskets that she sent. Oh me. my god! <laughs> oh my god! This is just like some of the most metal shit I've ever heard. Um, so that like does it for us this week, guys. Bit of a short one, but I am literally dying. And that does it for us this week, guys. Um, bit of a short one because I may literally die, and Madison, we quite frankly don't know, may literally be dead. Um, <laughs> no, but, but for real. <laughs> but please, for real, um, promise me if I do die, you guys will go on and do the podcast without me. Of course. So it is time to wrap up the way we love to wrap up with a little counterculture. Really quickly, um, we we talk about some really dark shit, and this has been some of the darkest yet. So we always like to wrap up talking about things that made us happy this week. So because we, we've we lost Madison's audio, we may have some of Madison's audio, I don't know. 
Again, just a quick plug for the Amarillo Town Club, because if you're in that area in the Texas Panhandle, guys, like, child care is important to moms who need to get stuff done. And I don't know if you feel like that, Bethany, but I feel like Mm -hmm. that is something that gets neglected so much Mm -hmm. that I want to give, like, a plug to that for sure, because it is great that they have, like, a free child care option, essentially, for people that go there. That is really Mm -hmm. freaking cool. Um, And then... I want to do my normal plug. I always love to give my love to Care Rescue Texas, carerescuetexas.com. And on social media, they're Care Rescue Texas. They do amazing work for animal rescue. And especially when it comes to big cats, it comes to some exotic animals, you know, because for whatever reason, people think it's okay to have wild animals in their homes. Whatever. I don't know. Super smart. What a great idea. And then I also want to tell everybody, I did an interview for Am I an Asshole podcast this week, and it was an absolute amazing experience. It was so funny. I listened to it. It was so funny. It was very enlightening. Oh, see, I'm so glad you liked it. Like, I did. I liked it. Please go give them a listen, rate, review, subscribe. Basically, each week they have a different guest on and they answer the question, am I an asshole for an example was ending toxic friendships. And I thought that was a really good one. If you haven't listened to that one, Bethany, I think that's something that women especially can attest to in their life. Like, Mm -hmm. But they also, they talk a little bit with their guests. They kind of talk about the issue at hand. And then they bring in the resident resident therapist and kind of walk through the issue, right? Like, it's a Mm -hmm. very cool premise for a podcast. I've never heard anything like it. I'm incredibly impressed by it. Um, So I did like, am I an asshole for keeping my last name after marriage? The answer, fuck no. But you're also not an asshole if you decide to take your husband's name. It's nobody's damn business but yours. I mean, Mm. I'm an asshole, but not for that. (laughs) Right, right. That is the last thing I would put underneath you for being an asshole for. So, Right. Um, And I call you an asshole literally once a week. So maybe more than that. And I'm going to say I probably deserve it. And (laughs) you will really, really, really enjoy the hosts of their Jackie Rosie. And then their, their resident therapists on hand. It's usually Jen. Sometimes it's different people. Um, So if I'm not your cup of tea, I promise some of their other guests very much will be. So Bethany, what made you happy this week? Well, you know, honestly, it's every week. It's every day. Memes are my life. I think they are hilarious. It's what makes me <laughs> chuckle and laugh. And every once in a while, I find the best ones that relate to you. So then <laughs> when I don't hear from you for like 24 hours at a time, I just send you a little meme to check in on you. <laughs> Uh, well because the truth is i'm somewhere between having an existential crisis i know somebody says one sentence to me that changes my whole life or i'm writing and researching for this damn podcast (laughs) (laughs) that's it that's Uh, all i do or doing my job at the museum two days a week we work (laughs) <laughs> no bethany let's be honest do you work i go somewhere I work. <laughs> and tinker with historical things because i like it so that we can yeah. pay our producer to put up with all of our crap speaking <laughs> of our producer oh speaking of a pretty our awesome person he is an extra special guy and an extra special thanks to our producer mike buzzing who Puts up with our shit, uh, makes us sound fantastic, <laughs> and most importantly, keeps us from sounding totally, cer- you know, certifiable. We sound semi-sane because of <laughs> things that Mike cuts out, guys. Like, oh. thank God for Mike. So, um, you can find him at podcasteditguy.com for all your podcasting needs. Let's say you're trying to start your own podcast yourself. We promise you, he is a good guy 
for yes. it. Because if he makes us out sane every week, imagine what he can do for you. <laughs> yeah. That should be his tagline. <laughs> it really should be. It really should be. Making body count sounds sane every week for a month and a half now. And let me tell you, it is no small job. Um, we also want to encourage our listeners to utilize, uh, utilize, utilize. <laughs> <laughs> now you know where we are at in our life right now. <laughs> I'm so sick, y'all. I need to be strapped to a hospital bed. I've never gotten well, I don't think, all the way. Oh, we want our, you, <laughs> I can't <wait. laughs> We want our listeners to utilize counterculture as well. You want us to... God damn it. I would also like to encourage our listeners to utilize counterculture as well. Bethany, just read it. I can't get it out anymore. We want you to hit us up on social media with anything that is super important to you. And we would love to talk about it here. What matters to you matters to us. And that's... I mean, that really does wrap it up. We will see you next Wednesday with what we never really know. <laughs> we never know what we're doing. We have a week to think about it. So um, also, listeners, if you are looking for your own personal, we are looking for your own personal historical true crime, death and disaster stories or close calls. So please email us. Um, reach out to Jessica or myself or Maddie. Uh, we have something really special in mind we want to do. So um, you can contact us at our email on our website, www.bodycountpod.net, um, where you can definitely listen and find links to purchase all of the source material that Jessica does. Um, so if you really would like to do a deep dive like Jessica does, we, which, which she just skimmed the surface. So um, we all encourage you to check that out. Um, you can DM Jessica on Twitter and Instagram, right? Yeah, you can DM me on Twitter and Instagram with any suggestions you guys may have. You know, we want to know what you want to hear about. Follow the show at Body Count Pod on Instagram and Twitter and Body Count Pod on Facebook. Um, when mm-hmm. you search for us, you know, make sure to search Body Space Count. We pop right up. We are available yeah, we do. anywhere that you listen to podcasts, including Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, et cetera, et cetera. Please subscribe, rate, and review to or and review the show. I you can follow me. And again, I, I check especially my own. Maddie kind of does body count. Bethany, we all are on the body count Twitter um, yeah. as much as we can be, but you can always hit us up personally. Um Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jessica B. Manor. Where do people find you, Bethany? Bethany Skelton 5, the number 5, at Twitter. Bethany R N 24 at Instagram. And Bethany Rose Skelton at Facebook. And that is S-K-E-L-T-O-N. Not skeleton. Skelton. <laughs> I just want to emphasize that people call me Mrs. Skeleton all the fucking time. Like that, that is, is not my name. It's so clearly not your name. It's so weird. <laughs> but since we may, you know, like Maddie was in part of this, like we kind of lost yeah. her on the audio there. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we plug Madison's stuff too. She is at Maddie. M A D D I capital E capital E O five O three on Twitter. Then she is Maddie M A D D I E underscore right at what the hell is the one with the pictures? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I hope that gets left in. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, the one with the pictures. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> this is the, Jessica, go to bed. <laughs> this is the biggest shit show that I have ever been a part of. Oh my oh god! Oh my like, god! Right now. <laughs> and then she's Madison Bright on Facebook. I am so thoroughly ashamed of the production value of this show well not the production value mike will do the best of what he can i am so thoroughly ashamed of us this week this is why you do not do a podcast when you are at death's door you just don't do it um 
Yeah, so much for the threes company. Uh, clearly, we all need to be separated in different padded rooms with Thorazine before we come together for a freaking podcast. Like, my God, what a shit show. All right. Thank you guys for attempting to listen yeah. this week to this disaster. <laughs> we love you all. We <laughs> Thank love you. you all. And I promised I will be well next week and we will see you then. Bye. Bye.